Okay, everybody, let's talk about Abyss 103. Man, I hated this floor back in the day, but there are some units now that I didn't have back then that make this floor a lot easier. This is the floor with the rats. You basically get to fight Shu's entire family, and the trick with the rats is every time you hit the rats, they CR push the entire rat team, and if you kill a rat, it gives a random other rat its ultimate, and if a rat does his ultimate, he raises one of the dead rats back to life. It's very, very circular, and you just feel stuck on that phase. The way we used to do it was to pound it down with a whole bunch of AoE units, and we still kind of do that, but the restrict buff gives us an extra edge. As for uh, fighting Sid and Dingo, actually a little bit easier than the stupid frustrating rat phase, but I'll get into that in a minute. This is the team I chose for this fight. What you need is a, a AoE Restrict unit, and AoE DPS to help kill off the rats, and then some good damage cleansing and stripping for Phase 2, which is our Tenebria and Tamarin. Try to provide alternates for the units as we discuss each one. First, let's talk about our Restrict unit. I chose Peyra for this fight. The reason I went with Peyra is because her Restrict cycles very quickly, but if you sort by Restrict, you'll see there are a lot of options. Astromancer Elena doesn't have to deal with elemental issues. She's about one turn slower on the uh, on the Restrict. You've got Cerise. Lucy is probably the best free-to-play option. Her Restrict is fast AoE, and she's also a healer, so she can wear some healing artifacts. Since I'm going with Peyra and some of the mice are green, I'm putting Oath Key on her just to increase the chance of sticking that um, Restrict debuff. Now... The reason I like Peyra the most is because she gets an extra turn with her S2, so she'll cycle that S3 skill, and also her high speed will help her cycle that skill through quickly. Next, you need an AoE unit. I chose Charlotte for this one. She's a good, solid AoE unit. There are no ice enemies in this fight, so she's a really good option for this. Just stack some damage on her. Lifesteal is nice because it'll help keep her alive during the more difficult phase two, more difficult in the damage sense. I'm going to run Spectre Tenebria as my principal DPS unit, and by principal I mean poisons. Poisons work on this floor and we're going to abuse them as best we can. She also has a stun on her S3 which can be really nice in controlling the rats and Sid on phase two. I put the Sierra Ren artifact on her just because it does have a poison in it, so that's an additional chance for poison. You could use Caladra or Book or any other DPS. Book actually wouldn't recommend because souls get stolen in this fight, so Book is kind of useless. Third is Tamarin. She is, as always, fantastic in this fight. I gave her... Um, Shamadra staff to get her ER over 200 just so she's not controlled. There are stuns on phase two, so it's really nice to have that 200 ER. To be honest with you, I don't think we're going to have the souls to ever press the guardian button. So at the start of the fight, I use Payer's S2, and I'm looking to restrict the majority of the mice. It looks like I got all but one of them, and that's great. I think if you, as long as you get all but one or all but two, you're good to proceed. Now if I just hit the one mice that's not restricted, the others won't be CR pushed because the, the rat you hit won't CR push himself. Now you notice when I hit the main rat, it's going to CR push that one rat who's not restricted. The reason I hit the main rat is you want to burst its damage down a lot. Once you get that main rat killed, it'll come back as a normal rat and then it's just some AoE slamming to, to get this done. The Restrict makes this so much easier. If you don't have Restrict, every single target attack will CR push the entire rat team a lot. Um, Spectre Tenebra uses her S3. Now her S2s are multi-targets, so you don't have to worry about the CR pushing. Charlotte, you never have to worry about the CR pushing, but as Restrict starts to wear off, you'll notice the rats getting that 50% CR push. And as a rat dies, another rat gets its ultimate. So that's something to consider too, is every time you kill a rat, another rat gets its ultimate. You notice all four rats have their ultimates. 
That means as soon as one of them takes a turn with his ultimate, it's going to bring back one of the dead rats. And there's a brand new one at full health. So that's fun. The damage output from Charlotte's really nice. The fact that she's AoE with all of her attacks as long as she has a buff. And if you put her in front, she will get hit often enough that she'll always have a buff. And that Spectre Tenebris S2 is not counted as a single target attack. Really lets you push through this first phase relatively quickly. We've got a restrict back. Hopefully we tag it on everybody. And we got it on everybody except that number one rat. So we attacked the number one rat because he can't see our push himself. You'll notice our complete lack of souls. The rats are thieves, they steal your souls. So coming in this fight with uh, Taga Hill's book really is not a good option. Everybody's still restricted, so I'm fine to go ahead and take a shot at stunning, and it gets resisted because 15% in PvE, am I right? Okay, there's enough poisons on the main scout to kill, so all I need to do is get this front rat to die. And there we go, that pushes phase. Sid and Dingo. In this fight, you want to avoid buffs. Whenever you take a turn and you're wearing a buff, Sid and Dingo CR boost by 15%. Sid also steals buffs and gives them to himself and to Dingo. And when Dingo S1s into a buffed unit, he will S2 AoE, hit your whole team, and that also heals his whole team. The goal is to kill Sid before Dingo does his ultimate. Not the easiest thing in the world because Sid does have some evasion on him, but we're just going to blast all the damage into Sid that we can and try to get him dead before he takes a turn. Or, I'm sorry, before Blaze Dingo's ultimate is ready. Well, S3 to strip the immunity and try to get Restrict on everybody. We got Restrict on Dingo, but we missed Sid because of Element. I'm not going to use the S2 because I don't want to um, add buffs. Tamarin heals up. Let's try to stun Sid. We get the stun. Very nice. Can we get a poison? Hey, we got a poison. Now Dingo cleansed the poison. That was lovely of him. Top off the healing here. So they really try hard to get you to not use buffs in this phase because if you have too if you're wearing too many buffs, you cycle Dingo and Sid too quickly, and it's very hard to kill Sid. So I'm gonna transform here, but I'm not going to S2. I don't want to give everybody a whole bunch of buffs yet. I'm just going to S1 because I'm trying to burst that Sid, that Sid down. You see, when Blaze Dingo uses his ultimate, he will fully heal Sid, and I have to start all over. Which happens. If it happens, don't fret. You can still kill Sid, you just have to do it in phase two. It's a little bit tougher because Dingo hits a lot harder than Blaze Dingo for some strange reason. Now a reminder about our buffs again. See how Dingo hits Charlotte? She's buffed, so it triggered his second attack, which is an AoE hit, which also heals his team. So again, that's another reason why you don't want to have buffs on a lot of your units. Now, a tech you could consider experimenting with is take a unit that only buffs itself, like Arrowell, giving herself Escort. Sid will be drawn to Arrowell, stealing Escort, and letting you funnel more damage into Sid. So that could possibly be a tech to help advance this phase. Now, I know I'm buffing the entire team contrary to what I just said, but I am 99% sure I'm killing Sid with this hit, and Blaze Dingo's getting ready to ultimate, and that turns him into Fire Dingo, which changes the entire dynamic. Except no, he evaded. Great. But luckily my Tam's going to come around the horn and be able to 
finish Sid off. So there's Sid dead before Blaze Dingo has transformed. And that is a perfect scenario. It doesn't always happen. Blaze Dingo hits his ultimate and transforms into, into Fire Dingo, and now he hits a lot harder. Now it's a reverse situation, but first I want to get back to what can happen if you fail to kill Sid. So this was a prior run that I fired up real quick, and as you can see, I'm missing Sid. Even though it's a fire unit, Sid is got built-in evasion, and you can miss. Yeah, I'm sad about it too, Money Man. So because I missed with Stenny's S3, and because Charlotte missed, I, I'm not stacking damage quick enough. I've got a whole bunch of buffs on, so when Dingo takes a turn, Blaze Dingo, I should say, takes a turn, he's going to attack and heal Sid. This just wasn't a very good run. Stole the defense buff. And Dingo transforms, and you notice Sid heals all the way back up to full. So now I'm dealing with fighting Sid and Dingo, and it can still be done. Make sure you strip all the buffs away, and in this second phase where you're fighting Fire Dingo, you need debuffs. You see, the more debuffs you have on Fire Dingo, the more damage you do. And if he has less than two debuffs on him, he will do his S1 into his AoE S2 attack, and that is a really annoying S2 attack because it... Um, can stun your entire party. So he doesn't have enough debuffs, so we need to do the S1. He goes right into his S2, and look at all those stuns. So you really need to keep debuffs on Fire Dingo to keep that annoying stun double attack from happening. It hits really hard, and it controls your entire team. And there he goes again. No poisons, that's unfortunate. You can't close your eyes. We will go ahead and transform and heal up and push up because, uh, man, I'm hurting. I will shine. So you can see why it's much easier to deal with this phase if Sid is no longer in play. We got to deal with trying to kill Sid while dealing with maintaining two debuffs on Fire Dingo. It's a much harder walk, especially, man, he evaded it again. Hopefully we get the Restrict. And he resisted. 15%. Gotta love it. You do need 65%. 65-60% effectiveness to maximize your chance to debuff. Trust me, my Payra is way beyond that. But a little bit of hard work. I got two poisons off, so I no longer have to worry about Sid doing his uh, double S2, at least not for a round or two. You'll notice one of those poisons is a one-turn poison. That was Sierra Ren paying off there. No stun, because he resisted, because 15%. Can I get another poison on Dingo? There we go. And Sid is dead. So you can do this just fine, killing Sid inside around two. But now back to the original run. This is the original run where we killed Sid first. Blaze Dingo has just transformed into Fire Dingo, and now we're facing the same fight again. Remember, you want to maintain two debuffs on Fire Dingo to keep him from doing the stun BS. So it's really important that you strip the two-turn immunity and get rid of the gold shield so you can do that. So unfortunately we're going to eat the stuns. This is why I think it's really good to have 200% ER on Tamarin so she will not be stunnable and she can keep your team healthy. So really push for that 200 effect resistance even if it means putting Bastion of Hope on her. So let's hope we strip. We strip, we got buff block and resist. So that's our two debuffs. He'll no longer do the S1, S2 AoE stun stuff at least we got two rounds of uh forgiveness from that with our two turn debuffs and now we can start focusing damage um i'm going to burn the s1 get a poison and you'll notice that 4,000 damage is now 6,000 damage the more debuffs you have the harder you will hit dingo so steny is great for this because you can stack the poisons 
There is a world where you can do this with Kyrus instead of Charlotte. You're going to suffer a lot in stage one, but once you get through it, it makes stage two a lot easier. I just can't imagine trying to do the, the rat phase without an AoE unit. Maybe you replace, uh, maybe you replace the, um, Para with Curus and try to poison cheese the whole thing. So now we're, uh, now we have a lot of debuffs up, so this hit is 11,000 damage. Man, and just when I'm getting excited about all the poisons and all the extra damage and how much better this is going to be, I activate his passive Calm Heart. This happens when you get six or more debuffs on him and he takes a turn. He transforms back into Blaze Dingo. So he does a lot less damage now, which is nice, but he does his S2 into his AoE attack, or his S1 into his AoE attack and self heals if you have buffs. So we're back to the not wanting to have a whole bunch of buffs. Because remember, if you've got buffs, he self pushes by 15%. You'll see here he self pushed. Payrush is going to take a turn, he self-pushes, so he cycles a lot faster, but he's doing a lot less damage, and our damage output seriously should outpace his self-healing. He attacked a buff unit, so he AoE attacks and healed himself for 3,800 health. Now, it'd be nice if we could keep him like this because he doesn't do a lot of damage, but once we get down to about the 30% health mark, that's a threshold and he transforms into Fire Dingo. So even if you're using a unit like Kisei to roll his skills back, you can't stop him from transforming into Fire Dingo because he will do it at his threshold points as well as doing it when he does his ultimate. So we are going to strip the immunity because remember again for Fire Dingo, we want to maintain two debuffs on him. So hopefully Tamarin is ready to transform and she is not, so he's going to do his jumpy thing here and stun everybody. One hit and then his big damage hit and stuns all around. Oh wow, okay, so we resisted the stuns, very lucky. There's one debuff. And Tam can transform. This can be a bit of a tricky fight because when he's in Blaze Dingo form, you don't want to wear buffs. But when he's in Fire Dingo form, you want to be able to wear some buffs like Immunity especially would be nice and spam debuffs. So controlling when and where you can spam buffs and debuffs makes the mechanics a little bit difficult, but this team does it nicely. Para has a lot of buffs and debuffs that she can decide when and when not to use. Peyra acts as a form of a knight because her escort skill lets her be basically an Arius knight on the field. With uh, Charlotte always having buffs, she draws the fire of Green Sid. Yes, Sid will steal her buffs, but being a fire unit, she can usually tank his stuff a little bit more often, and he keeps buffs on her, so her attacks are always AoE. Tam has got strips and heals. She can choose whether or not to buff. You can always... I want to say you can soul burn her S1, but I can't remember ever having souls this entire fight. And poisons work. So four poisons as soon as Dingo takes a turn. That is one dead Dingo. And that is how I beat Floor 103 with the current units in the game. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments section. I know this guide was kind of fast and loose and all over the place, but... Hopefully the summary of the skills and the notes during the fight help out. If you uh, need further assistance with it, make sure you join my Discord. I'm there to answer questions whenever you need them. And as always, like and subscribe. Have a great one, everybody.